Well, the reading took us to the potter's house. And uh, I'm going to ask you, in your imagination, to come with me to the potter's house. This is a task for all of you. And I want you to imagine that there is the wheel that you are working on and you have a lump of clay sitting on the wheel and you have a bowl of slip beside you and you've made your hands all wet and slippery and you are about to work on this clay. Shut your eyes and imagine what you are going to make. And as it is made in your hands. So, what have you made? Stuart, describe what you've made. <laughs> right, so Stuart has made a pot and he's put three rings in the clay but he doesn't quite know why. That's, that's great. Carol, would you like to tell us what, you're ma- what you've made? I bet you didn't make the handles while the thing was spinning. <laughs> so can you describe the bit without the handles? Right, okay, okay. Um, let me see. Tom, what about you? What? It's got a bit bent. and <laughs> Yes, well, that would be like most of us. John, what have you made? <coughs> Tall and quite narrow. Right, anybody else like to have a go? Pat, a jam pot have you made? <laughs> right. A number of us seem to like this one that comes out at the bottom and uh, swells down there. Well, there we are. We have made... We have made our pot, and um, on the screen you have three words. It is Education Sunday, and this image of making a pot I'm going to use in the context of these three words. First of all, the word education, and then vocation, and then restoration, out of this reading from Jeremiah. And you might like to, when you go home, to read the whole of chapters 18 and 19 because Jeremiah develops this theme as those chapters proceed. Uh, The context, of course, is that the Judeans, the Judean Jews, uh, had become marred. They were supposed to be a nation bringing God to the world. And in this they had largely failed and Jeremiah is saying that the pot was marred. That's the context of the, the passage. As it develops, full, as the passage develops through, 
we see other aspects coming through. So that was uh, the original idea of the pot in God's hands. Education then, what does it mean? Well, back in 1953, young Roger Mitchell at the age of, well, well, anyway, 1953, was doing his O-level Latin, and he came across this word, duco, ducery, duxi, ductum, which means to lead or to draw. And if you put the letter E in front, then it means to lead out, to draw out. A ductile substance, a ductile metal, can be drawn out into a wire or into some, it can be moulded into some sort of shape. Of course, people are not the inanimate material that clay is. So the analogy that, uh, that occurs in this reading isn't, isn't a completely exact one, but we can get the point nonetheless. The task of education, then, is one that to draw out, to lead out from individuals what is in their nature, God-given in their nature, which perhaps they haven't yet discovered to lead it out, to draw it out, to make it into something that God has planned. That is the task of education. And of course it doesn't just, it, does, it isn't just something for schools, for colleges, for universities, for academies or whatever. Because we all are being educated every day of our lives. There is no day that goes past but, but without us learning something new about ourselves or about the world. And we, we need to absorb this idea throughout our lives. We are constantly being, being encouraged to learn more, to think harder about the things which we so often take for granted. Education then... And the task of education is to provide as rich an environment as possible for young people uh, to discover what they enjoy, what they are good at, what they have within themselves. Woe betide an educational system that only concentrates on maths and English or a limited range of subjects. A school must attempt to provide a wide range, drama, music, technology, the arts, the ability to lead, the ability to enjoy playing games and keeping fit. That the whole, the whole gamut of human existence needs somehow to be put into our educational system. It should never be narrow. The second word, vocation. Vocation. What does that mean? Well, we talk a lot about vocational education. In schools, um, the careers department will be called the Department of Vocational Education, or words to that effect. Uh, but so often we don't know what the word means. The word vocation means, of course, to be called, calling out, a calling. Now that, of course, opens up a big existential question. The question of, is this world all there is? Am I all that there is? Am I responsible to anybody? Um, am I for anything? Is there a reason for my existence? No, what was the purpose, Jenny, of your pot? Yes, your pot. Ah. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, let me see, who can I... Aina, what was your pot for? 
came out square. <laughs> wow. So, jolly good. So you can square the circle, can you? <laughs> You see, you had in mind, didn't you, as you made that pot, a purpose for that pot. And the question that young people, and we, all of us, need to ask ourselves is, are we there for a purpose? This is a big question. So, I did try, uh, when the careers department was going on about vocational education, etc., 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 to put into my assemblies from time to time the idea that maybe you are not just here to be successful or be happy or be popular or to be rich. You might be here to benefit other people. You might be here to leave the world a better place than when you came into it. And of course our dear John, who has been referred to this morning, was, was a, such an example of someone who lived with that purpose to leave the world as a better place than when he entered it. So these are questions which seldom get asked in ordinary schools, I have to admit. But they are questions I believe that young people need to be asking of themselves and of the world around them. Is, is it all meaningless or is there a purpose? Has it been created for a purpose or has it just happened? These are questions which certainly need to be asked in any educational process. So do I ever regard all that I do as a service to him who called me. The third word is restoration. Now as the story goes on with Jeremiah in these two chapters, you will find that Jeremiah prophesies that, the, that Judea will be destroyed, Jerusalem will be destroyed, its people will be taken off to Babylon because they have failed. Because they have failed. But... There is hope. He says you will be restored. You will come back to this city. This city will be a place where my, my name will be honoured once more. There is hope. The destruction is not the end. And don't we all need to know that we go wrong? Golly, do we go wrong? But there is hope. There is restoration. There is a new life. God is a God of the new. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Paul says in Corinthians, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And he who sits on the throne in Revelation 21 says, behold, I make all things new. God is a God of hope, a God of the new. And don't we need that message? It is a tragedy, the number of young people who take their own lives. They've come to the point where it is hopeless. There is nothing for me but to end my life. What could be more tragic than that? And somehow, in the educational process, we have to give people hope and encouragement. Even though they might not believe in God, we all know that the present is not the future and things may change there needs to be hope but if we could if we could in some way ask the question is there a God is there a purpose because if so there is hope there is hope of restoration there is hope of putting right there is hope of making a new pot out of the clay which has gone all wobbly as clay does well certainly if I were to do it 
So now this, uh, as far as restoration is concerned, I discovered the other day that there is a Japanese technique, whose name I can't remember, um, but if a, if a porcelain pot is broken, then they, there is a technique for restoring it with an adhesive which, is, which includes gold dust or silver dust. And so far from hiding the crack, it enhances the crack and increases the value of the object. What a remarkable image of restoration, isn't it? That the crack becomes, becomes the thing of value. What was broken has become the object of hope. Well, this is... Uh, I'm not um, hiding the fact that I'm now going to advertise Christian schools work in Hastings whose purpose is to bring to young people a knowledge or an understanding that there may well be a God who created. And that God is a certain type of God who restores. That's the role of CSWH. And you are not going to get out today without taking our new brochure which we call a waterfall for obvious reasons. It was Lucy's um, idea to produce it so that it flapped open in a rather intriguing way. And uh, you'll get one of these this morning, aren't you fortunate people? Uh, as you go out this morning and it will tell you about um, CSWH and how you can pray for it, what it does, how you can support it in whatever way that you can. So will this be your ministry of prayer for our education system? That somehow, somewhere, CSWH and the educational process as a whole will bring news that there is a God who loves you, who calls you, who leads you and restores you. Let that be our prayer as we uh, go back into our daily life this week. I'm reminded we've already sung a, a nice chorus um, that Kevin led us in about, um, about moulding the clay. And I've just come across this one this morning as I was praying earlier this morning. I remembered a, a, a chorus we used to sing when I was very young. And it goes like this. You are the potter, we are the clay, mould us and make us in your own way. Whatever the vessel, help us to be, no, sorry, whatever the vessel, uh, help us to be used in your service to glorify thee. Oh, lo lovely, isn't it? Can that be our prayer as we, I hope, will read chapters 18 and 19 of Jeremiah. Thank you, Ray.